the measurement of economic performance. Uh, when you talk about measuring your economic performance, it comes across how the economy is. Yeah, like you you judging the economy. You want to place the economy with based on how it is performing. So how can you judge an economy? What are those things, what are those criteria you use in judging an economy? One, you can use the economic goods to judge an economy, inflation, employment and unemployment, and the balance of payments. So these four criteria are used to judge the performance of an economy. So before we now go into what the performance of an economy is, we need to understand the study of the economy. And the study of the economy implies understanding what and what is being produced in that economy. And do you want to study the economy in terms of the individual market or the market as a whole? So that is when you have to judge. So you have to judge based on the performance in an individual market or the performance as a whole. So that brings us to what we call microeconomics and macroeconomics. So what is microeconomy? So microeconomics, sorry. Don't change that to microeconomics. Yeah, so when you think about microeconomics, what does it really imply? It's the study of the individual market within an economy. So this applies to the demand for or goods, the demand for goods and services in an individual market. So let's assume we're talking about the market for housing. So the market for housing is the microeconomy because it only studies housing within the economy. The market for education, it's only education within that economy. So when we are studying or when we need to base the performance of when we are when we are when we are when we want to base the performance of an economy based on a market, then we are studying, we are talking about microeconomics. That's what they said. Microeconomics is the study of the demand for goods and services in the market. Mm -hmm. So here, I didn't give an example anyway. So I said it is the study of individual markets within an economy. This applies to the demand for a good or service in an individual market. So when you need to study the demand for the market of phones or technology, that is a that is microeconomy. Do you understand microeconomics here? Is it clear, please? Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you talk about Macroeconomics. For macro, that's the whole of the market. So the total of goods and services produced in that economy, that is macroeconomics. I think you get the difference here. Microeconomics is the study of an individual market. What is being produced in that individual market? That's microeconomics. But when we talk about macroeconomics, then we're talking about the study of the whole economy. So look at what I wrote. Macroeconomics is the study of the economy as a whole. This implies the study of the total value of goods and services in an economy. So, the total value of goods and services produced in that economy. When you need to study that, then you are studying macroeconomics. I think it's clear. So, based on that, we need to go back to why we are studying macroeconomics. The most important thing about studying macroeconomics is that it allows us to study or to judge the performance of the economy. It tells us more about the performance of the economy. Do you understand? So that is why we need to go into what we call national economic performance. Because we have studied macroeconomics, it tells us more about the national economic performance. So let's look at this. So national economic performance. I said through macroeconomics, it becomes easier to measure the performance of the economy. So that means because we studied macroeconomics, it allows us, it gives us ample opportunity to understand deep, in the in-depth analysis about our economy. Mm -hmm. So how our economy is performing. So, what is an economy itself? I said it is a system that is attempting to resolve the problem of scarcity in a, in a world that is infinite wants. Mm -hmm. So, there's a system that is, the problem of the society or the problem of the economy is scarcity, right? So, a system is studying this problem to resolve it because it knows that the wants of individuals, the wants of households are infinite. So that system that is trying to solve the problem of scarcity in the world of infinite wants is what we call an economy, which is a country. Do you understand? So each country
country will want to try to ensure that it solves the scarcity problem. So that is why we call a country an economy. So you know what an economy is now? A system that is trying to solve or that is making an attempt to resolve the problem of scarcity in a world of infinite wants. That means our wants are unlimited, but they won't try to solve the problem. That is an economy. So they are using a system to solve it. Then we go to what we call the economic system. You know, in the economic system, we have different types of economic system. We have the plant economic system, we have the market economy system, and we have the mixed economy system. So to allocate resources, a country must ensure it uses one of these to solve its economic, to allocate its resources. So what's an economic system? Look at what I said. It is, I wrote, is a, is a mechanism used to decide what to be produced, when it should be produced, and who will benefit from the production. So, economic system is a mechanism that resolves, that decides what to be produced in an economy, when to get the production done, and who benefits, who are the beneficiaries to this production. So, something has to be produced. The economic system will decide that. When is it going to be produced? The economic system will decide it. Who are we making this production for? The economic system will decide that in an economy. And remember we said an economy is what? An economy is a, is a system that is trying to resolve, or that is making an attempt to resolve the scarcity problem, the problem of scarcity in the world that there is infinite wants. So, it's a system that is trying to solve that problem of scarcity using the economic system. So that's why economic system is what? The mechanism to solve the problem of this economy. I think it's clear. So, so when judging the performance of an economy, one of the criteria to use is the level of production. So, how do you judge? How do you make, how do you judge the performance of an economy? You judge the performance of an economy based on what is being produced in that economy. So, what are these things that are produced in that in that economy? Production. So, when judging the performance of an economy, one of the criteria to use is the level of production. So, in such economy, so if production level is high, then the economy is considered to be better. So, if the production level of this country is high, that means a lot of products are being made in this country. The level is high, then you can you can logically say that the economy of this country is better. Do you understand? So, if production level increases in this economy, you judge it with what happens in the past. Oh, three years ago we are unable to produce. Oh, now we are able to produce. For example, some five years ago, the number of the, uh, the barrels of petrol, that, the barrels of petrol or crude oil that comes out of Libya is not that much to like now. Now they go to over one million barrels per day. That means you are judging based on, before now it was maybe 300 barrels per day, 300,000 bar barrels per day. But now it is about one million barrels per day. So you are judging the economy based on the performance of the past and the performance of now. That is what we mean by national economic performance. So you're judging the economy based on the study of what happens in the past and what is happening right now. Mm -hmm. So if the production in the past we said is less, that means Libya produces 300,000 barrels, for example. But now we are producing 1 million barrels per day. So that means the level of our, the performance level is becoming better. That is what we're talking about here. So the first thing you use in determining or judging an economic performance is the level of their production. I think it's clear. Another criterion is the use of resources in such economy. How are they using resources in this economy? You've talked about production, fine. So are resources fully utilized in this economy? So that's another way you can judge the performance of an economy. So when you talk about resources being fully utilized, we might spend, for example, let's say unemployment. If there's unemployment in an economy, what does that imply? It means that the workforce are not fully engaged. Do you get it? So if the workforce are not fully engaged, it means the level of output in this economy cannot be at the level it's supposed to be. So look at what I wrote here. I said, another criterion is the use of resources in such economy. Are resources fully utilized? For example, if there is a high unemployment rate in an economy, it means that the workforce is not fully utilized, which means that which means the country cannot be producing at its potential level of output. 
So, if a lot of people are not having a job in this country, that means they are not engaged. So that means this country is not fully utilizing its workforce. Then how can it, how can it expect a high level of output? No, you can't. Because your workforce are not working. It's only when your workforce are working that your output will improve or increase. But if they are not working, they are, they are not engaged, then you can't expect the potential of that level of output to increase or to rise because they are not working. Another problem about unemployment is that it could even lead to poverty for those that are not working. Mm -hmm. And when it leads to poverty for those that are not working, then the living standard for those that are not working will be low. Mm -hmm. That means the, the, the standard of living will be, will be falling, which means the performance of the economy is not fine. Do you understand? So, how you use resources in the economy can also determine the performance of your economy. If you are fully utilizing your resources, it gets better. If you are not fully utilizing your resources, then your level of output cannot reach its potential level. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? So, so, this is the first thing we are talking about, the national economic performance. Because we have studied macroeconomics. And I told you macroeconomics is what? The study of the whole economy. That means the total of production in terms of goods and services produced in that economy. And I told you about microeconomics. I said microeconomics is what? The study of an individual market within an economy. So the market for housing is an individual market. That is microeconomics. But housing could become macroeconomics when it has to deal with the prices. So when the price of housing increases in an economy, and as a result of that, it affects the standard of living. Or it affects the society, then it becomes macroeconomics. Mm -hmm. Listen again. We're using housing as an example. Mm -hmm. Housing is a microeconomics because it studies an individual market. But housing could become macroeconomics. How? If price of houses, how if the price of housing rises in an economy, and as a result of that, it leads to a, a low standard of living in the society, or it affects the, co the society as a whole, then it becomes macroeconomics. Mm -hmm. But if it's only about the number, the total number of housing or the total number of house, house built or the total number of people, em uh, people engaged in housing activity, then it is micro. Mm -hmm. if, you, if it's only about to know the numbers of housing available, the total number of revenue mm -hmm. that comes into housing, if that is all you want to know, then it is microeconomics. But if it becomes a problem or it becomes an issue for the whole economy, then housing becomes a macroeconomics. Mm -hmm. If you are studying the demand for housing and the supply of housing alone, it is microeconomics. But if housing becomes a case for the whole society, then it becomes macroeconomics. I think it's clear. Mm -hmm. Any question about it? Mm -hmm. So, we said with the help of macroeconomics, we are able to perform, we are able to judge the performance of the economy, right? So now, how do we judge the performance of the economy through the national economic policy or uh, performance? So we said there are several ways in which the performance of the economy can be measured. They are as follows. So the performance of the economy can be judged based on certain levels or criteria. One is the economic growth, inflation, unemployment, and the last one balance of payments. So these are ways in which you can judge the performance of an economy. So let's start one at a time. So let's talk about economic growth. When we talk about economic growth, basically we're talking about the output of that country in terms of what it produces. So look at what I wrote. This implies, this implies to the level of output in a country, which can be measured using the gross domestic product, GDP. So, to measure the output of a country, you use the gross domestic product in measuring the output. So, an increase in GDP of an economy indicates a boom. Mm -hmm. So, if the GDP of a country continues to increase, that is a boom mm -hmm. to economic growth. While a fall in the GDP for two consecutive quarters, that's six months, indicates recession. Therefore, a high economic growth is, be is better than a low economic growth, as high economic growth indicates high GDP. So, to measure the performance of an economy, of a country, that's an economy, to measure the performance of an economy, 
You can use economic growth. And how do you use economic growth? You measure the country's GDP. So measuring the country's GDP means you are you measuring the value of output of that country. So if the GDP of that country falls for six months, then there's recession. But if the GDP of the country continues to increase, then it's a boom in that country. So recession or boom is used to measure the economic performance of a country. Do you understand? That's economic growth. I think it's clear. Then we we'll go on to inflation. What is inflation? Inflation is a persistent rise in the prices of goods and services in an economy. So, I said this applies to the persistent rise in the prices of goods and services in an economy. In an economy, when you are measuring to inflation, that means you are talking about the price of goods and services in that economy. So, we can, we can measure the price of goods and services from last year to the price compared to the price of goods and services this year. Do you understand? So if compared to last year, if comparing the price of goods and services last year to this year, and we are having a negative figure, that means a low inflation rate, which is good for the economy. But if we are having a positive figure, that means there's what high inflation rate. That means last year is even better in terms of price than this year. Do you get it? So High inflation rate tends to become to make the purchasing power of household to fall. As a result, the living standard will fall because you are not going to be able to buy those things you used to buy with high inflation rate. Are you getting what I'm saying here? So, logically, it means that a low inflation rate is better than high inflation rate. If there's high inflation rate, price of goods and services are increasing, household spending will fall. That means we are not going to be able to buy what we used to buy. That means the standard of living will start falling, which is not good for the economy. So if you are measuring the performance of an economy through inflation, so if there is an high inflation rate or a positive inflation rate, that means what? The economy is poor, is not doing well. But if there is a negative inflation rate, that means the economy is doing well. Is it clear? So when you are measuring the inflation rate, it means you are comparing the prices of goods and services now to that of the previous year. Mm -hmm. I think it's clear. Then we go to unemployment. What is unemployment? Unemployment is a situation which means that a lot of people that are willing, that are within the workforce, are willing to work, but they are unable to get a job. They are not engaged and they continuously to search for a job, but they couldn't get one. That is what unemployment means. That means the rate, of, the rate of individuals who are willing and able within the category to work are unable to secure a job. They are unable to secure a job. So look at what I wrote here. This is a situation whereby the workforce continuously seek for employment without having one. The workforce continuously seek for employment. Listen, workforce implies to the number of people that are able to work in a country. Not workers, not employed. Do you understand workforce here? Workforce imply, in, includes those that are working and those that are not having a work, that are not working. So if the workforce are seeking for a job and they are unable to get the job, they become unemployed. Do you understand? So when the number of unemployed is more in a country, it's bad for the country. Because it means that resources are not fully utilized in that country. Remember when we talked about unemployment the other time when we talked about economic performance. When there is unemployment in the country, it means the potential outputs cannot increase. That means the country will not reach the level the potential the level of outputs it's supposed to reach because a lot of people are not engaged. Do you understand? So unemployment I said an economy that is growing must create job opportunities. Therefore economies that are fast growing tend to create more jobs and it results with low unemployment rates. Mm. So, economic growth has to do with employment. So if the economy is growing, that means a lot of people are engaged. Mm. And when a lot of people are engaged, that means productivity will increase in that country. That means output level will rise in that country. Yes. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, economic growth and unemployment works hand in hand. A country that is improving or that is witnessing economic growth will definitely witness employment rise mm -hmm. or a low unemployment. 
Do you understand? So, low unemployment is better than high unemployment. Because low unemployment means that a lot of people are getting jobs. A lot of people are leaving the unemployed situation and now engaging. Do you understand? So, you can also measure the performance of your economy through the rate of unemployment. As you can measure through economic growth, as you can measure through inflation, which is price. Also, you can measure based on the number of people that are, that are working in your country, the number of employed against the number of unemployed. So if the number of unemployed is more than the number of employed, then your economy is not doing well. That means the performance of that economy is poor. I think it's clear. Then, the last one we talk about the balance of payment. So what is the balance of payment? I said DOP is the accounting, is the accounting of the country's transaction with the, with the rest of the world. Over a period, what over a period of time, over a period of time, over a period of time, over a period of time. What we are talking about is this: the total inflow in terms of imports and exports against the total outflow in terms of import and export is our balance of payment. Do you understand? The cash flow into a country from outside and the cash flow outside of the out of the country is what we call balance of payments. Mm. What you receive in terms of inflow and what you pay out in terms of outflow is the measurement of the balance of payment. So that's why I said balance of payment is what is the accounting of a country's transaction with the rest of the world over a period of time. So it comes as a result of your balance of trade. Mm. So there wouldn't be balance of payment without balance of trade. So balance of trade is what? Transaction. Transaction that has been done in terms of import or export. Mm -hmm. So when there's a transaction in terms of export, then you'll be expecting a payment, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And when there's a transaction in terms of import, you'll be expected to pay out. So paying out and getting it is what we call balance of payments, which is inflow and outflow. Then what, has been, what is the inflow? What is the outflow? The inflow is as a result of you trading with outside of the world in terms of export. The outflow is as a result of you buying from outside the world or outside from outside of the country, which you have to pay for. Mm -hmm. So look at balance of trade here. I said balance of trade, which is the value of goods and services sold abroad. The value of goods and services sold abroad is what exports. Mm -hmm. You are selling outside of the country. That is exports. And the value of goods and services bought from abroad. So when you buy from abroad, that is import. So the value of your import and export is the balance of trade. The payment on your import and export is the balance of payment. Do you understand? What they paid you based on what you exported is your balance of payment. What you paid based on what you imported is your balance of trade. Is value is your balance of payment. I think it's clear. Good. So for the balance of trade, we have a balance of trade surplus and balance of trade deficit. What situation makes a surplus? When this export exceeds, when your balance, when your total export exceeds your imports, that means the value of what you sell out of the country is more than the value of what you bring into the country, and there's a balance of trade surplus. But what in the other case, in contrast, what what when what you sell out of the country is less than what you buy into the country, then it is a balance of trade deficit. So a surplus is better than a deficit. So a country that is measured, when you are measuring the performance of a country based on what it imports or our exports, then you are talking about using balance of payments. Mm -hmm. So if a country exports more, exports more than imports, then the country is doing well. Mm -hmm. But if the country relies mostly on air imports, then the country is not doing well. Do you understand? So a country must not rely on imports. Rather, a country must make so much exports. Other countries must rely on your country in terms of exports. That makes your economy to boom. But when you rely on other countries for imports, then you are not doing well as, an, as a nation or as an economy. So these are the ways in which we can measure the performance of a country. We can measure the performance of a country through economic growth, measured by the GDP. You can measure the performance of a country, that means you are, you are measuring based on the output of that country. You can measure the performance of a country based on the prices of goods and services in that country, which is inflation. 
A low inflation means the economy is doing well. A high inflation means the economy is doing poorly. You can also measure the size of the, you can measure, you can also measure the performance of an economy through unemployment. So a low unemployment rate means that the economy is getting better. The economy will become greater and will grow. So if so much people are getting engaged, that means it will lead to what we call economic growth. So if unemployment is falling, then economic growth will rise, or economy will rise, and there will be economic growth. And last we talked about the balance of payments, which is as a result of your balance of trade. So the value of what a country brings in and the value of what it takes out can be measured, can be used to measure the performance of that country.